Building mobile applications in 2022 is still a thing to do, right? Who would have thought? There are several options for building mobile applications. Kotlin and Swift for native applications that are the thing to do when you're building proper mobile applications that you want to perform perfectly. React Native, and I'll talk about this later. Ionic, same thing. Xamarin, no, this is a joke. And Flutter, the thing we're all here today for. First off, one disclaimer. I use Flutter for work and it's buying me everything I have, so I'm a bit, a bit biased. So, Kotlin and Swift. These are good options if you want to waste two years of your life for building one application because it's one year to learn both of them and uh, another year to make the application twice and they're not going to have the best outcome if you do that one uh, after the other or both at the same time because you'll likely have some stuff that you will do that feel right on the other platform and so on uh, mixing the two up or mixing the concepts that uh, the two offer or yeah you get the point and god forbid you take advice from someone that tries to teach you java or objective c for these two in 2022 because you're not gonna have a good time and you're not gonna have a job in like two years Kotlin and Swift are the best ones uh, right now to do this. And uh, if you don't want to work on legacy apps, this is the way to go. If you're looking to join the job market with Kotlin and Swift, you'll have a good surprise when you see the salaries. But if you want to do anything but salary-based or contract work uh, and you uh, want to get on freelance full-on projects, it will be hard for you to get first clients because you will quote double what the React developers or or Ionic or whatever because you'll have to build two apps as I mentioned. So yeah, but the salaries are great, so go on. React Native! If you're already a React developer, this is a good option if you want to prototype. Not build proper production applications and again this may be very well biased but uh, when I tried it and uh, I really wanted it to work but having uh, your frame rate capped at 60 fps and not being able to use react libraries that were made for react when react native Re when react native has react in the name well it's not really counterintuitive, I guess, or it is, you decide. But coming back to the limitation of 60 frames per second when uh, most mobile devices in 2022 have 120 hertz, well, yeah, I wouldn't go for that. Oh, and be ready for building some platform-specific code whenever you're trying to do something that involves the sensors or the functionality of the phone th themselves, not just HTTP calls and uh, random UI. But I'll cut it some slack because it's uh, an overall good option to build mobile applications if you want to just prototype and um, yeah, if you already know React, it will be easy to learn but not an instant learn because it's not React itself. The job market will reward you for learning this and uh, yeah, you can get a freelance job, you can get a, a startup or even corporate job uh, with ease with this one. So, yeah, overall, a good option, I guess. Ionic. If you want to build a PWA or a progressive web app that is kept at 60 frames per second like React, you can go with Ionic. Jokes aside, there are some benefits on Ionic. Uh, the main one being you can port your website really quick into being a proper application. Or, okay, proper is not the best word for this, but uh, an application nonetheless. If you want to find a job with Ionic, you'll sure find a job in the Vue space or React space. Not mobile, but yeah. Xamarin. That was a joke at first, it's a joke now. 
I know I'm just adding insult to injury, but uh, Microsoft bought it in good faith and now it's killing it, replacing it with something. And honestly, I don't even care what. Zero out of ten. Flutter. The positives. As the title suggests, I choose Flutter. I choose Flutter because of several features it has and um, the way you build things with. So let me just make a list of this. Speed is amazing and uh, the frame rate is not capped to 60 frames per second. I tried it with uh, displays that are 120 hertz and uh, well, it worked amazing. Uh, unlike React Native and Ionic. Development time is okay, but not at first. At first, you'll have to introduce some structure into your code because uh, Flutter tends to be all over the place and you'll write a lot of spaghetti code uh, if you're not trying not to. You sell your soul to Google if you go with Flutter. And um, that's not necessarily true if you don't want to, but you'll want to because Firebase is uh, the thing that works perfect with it. And if you search for a Flutter backend, uh, a lot of results will be in the realm of Firebase and how you should use Firebase database or and every other Google service for this thing. But there's a reason for that because it's well implemented and uh, it's really easy to use whatever you're doing. Uh, if you're trying to build a hobby app, Firebase is free. If you're trying to build an app with less than 50,000 users, it's still free. And um, yeah, if you do it well, you'll probably have uh, no money spent until you actually make some. I'm going to repeat myself saying that uh, Flutter code is really hard to structure at first. But uh, I'm going to drop a video next uh, month, I guess, um, with uh, Flutter structure and architecture. And uh, yeah, after you see that or define your own, uh, it will be quite easy to have some structure and write more than three screens in an application. Yeah, it is hard at first, but at first you're uh, building some hobby projects anyway, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem. And after you get used to it, it's quite easy. It's definitely fine. That's, it will become second nature. Making animations in Flutter, even though it's not capped at uh, 60 hertz, there is a small problem in the way that it's magical. And by magical, I mean that uh, you don't have a lot of control over it if you don't want to uh, write a lot of code for every animation. And uh, if you don't use the preferred way of making animations or writing code in general, that means using stateful widget, you won't have a nice experience with that. Uh, but yeah, by magical, I mean that you don't have a lot of control over it. But the animations are cute and uh, there is a lot of predefined animations that you can use on widgets or transitions. So that should be a plus and a minus. Negatives. Nobody, but nobody uses Dart. Only the Flutter developers use Dart because uh, it's another Google repurposed language and uh, no one used Dart for replacing JavaScript, so they're making it now so you can write mobile applications with it and it's not bad necessarily, but it's another uh, thing to learn. Uh, it's not a hard language to learn, but it's quirky. So if you know JavaScript or Java, you'll have a easy time learning Dart, but yeah, it's not something you'd ever like. There are not too many good options in terms of tutorials on Flutter, uh, besides the getting started page from uh, the official flutter.dev page. Google makes some good tutorials and uh, there is the Flutter Boring Developer Show that uh, is a uh, lengthy podcast that appears quite often but if you don't have the time to watch those and uh, get tips and tricks 
like I never did, it will be a journey. But that could be a good thing also. I know I did not define positives and negatives uh, quite well, but uh, yeah, follow me on this one. So the lack of tutorials could be a good thing in the way of... Uh, if you like to figure out stuff and um, enforce your own structure to things, it will be really easy for you to do that because uh, there are no strong opinions on this and the community won't penalize you for trying anything. And if you post uh, your own structure on Stack Overflow along with a question, no one cares and uh, they will try to help you with the Flutter specific thing. Unlike following a Go thread when Everyone tells you, you did it wrong, not addressing the thing you're asking. The job market on Flutter is quite young in the way that there are not so many uh, Flutter job postings, but um, the salaries shouldn't be as low as the other oversaturated market like React or Angular for now. So yeah. Overall, this is my opinion on um, Flutter and its competitors in 2022. I would highly advise you to learn Flutter in 2022 if you want to make a quick buck or a long-term career uh, for at least five years in the future. I'm signing out now. Bye.